Got the Switch. I've had the Switch for about a month. I think I'm going to tell you about the Switch. Welcome to the channel, everybody. Zero here with a brand new video. Something a little bit different, something I don't normally do, and that is a review. A review on the Nintendo Switch. Um, and I probably should back up right now and say that maybe this isn't even a review. Maybe this is a, I've had this thing for a month, and I'm going to tell you what I think about it, because it costs a lot of money, and maybe it's the right thing for you to get. Maybe it's not. So, let's go ahead and get into it. And I guess before I actually break the system down and tell you what I like and stuff about it, let me tell you how I got it. I didn't really plan on getting the Switch at all. Um, I didn't pre-order it, and I kind of saw the game, you know, the, the starting lineup for games and stuff and thought, this is something that I probably don't necessarily need to grab right away. So I pre-ordered Breath of the Wild for the Wii U and was going to pick that up. I was fine with that. Uh, but right the day before launch, Amazon sent me an email and said that your Breath of the Wild won't come until the following Wednesday. All of a sudden, I don't know what happened, uh, and I don't know if this happened with other people, but my Amazon pre-order, which was supposed to be delivered on the date of release, got pushed back. No big deal. I'll pick it up at the store. I don't normally pre-order games, but Amazon, with their 20% off for a prime discount, it's that's the way to go, man. If you're going to get a game, 20% off, it's perfect, and it's usually delivered that day. So anyway, um, I didn't have it. My wife went to the store while I was at work, going to pick up a copy of Zelda on the Wii U. But when she got to Best Buy that morning, she was surprised to find that they had a decent amount of Switches sitting there on the floor. Uh, there were six Switches, um, three neon and three gray. And so she ended up actually picking up two Switches and Zelda that day. And uh, we were able to get my buddy a Switch too, so it worked out really well that way. Um, but I did not plan on getting a Switch. So getting Zelda and the Switch, it just it, it kind of was a coincidence in how things fell into play. I know a lot of people are having trouble getting them, but I think they've, they've upped the production enough that I'm starting to see at my local Target here in Michigan, they had two on the shelves today, and I heard that the Best Buy has even more than that. Now, I did not see them at a Myers or a GameStop or even a Walmart, but I'm sure that in the next uh, couple of weeks, you're going to see a lot more of these bad boys out on the shelf. So, very cool. Now, the other cool thing about the last month is that I've put a ton of hours into the Switch. And the reason because of the terrible Poison Ivy attack I have. If you, Anybody that hasn't been to my channel in a long time, they'll see over the last month my channel has been pretty light in content. And I'm normally a multi-video-a-day kind of guy. So, over the last month, with this deadly Poison Ivy attack, I'm extremely allergic. I don't want to tell the story anymore. But anyway, I've been playing a crap ton of the Switch. And so I've been really got a good idea of what it is and, and what it's supposed to be. So with that being said, let's break down a little bit about the system. Uh, the system's small. It's a handheld. It's very small. <sighs> to, to, in comparison in size, so this is the iPhone 6 Plus, all right? And here's the Switch. It's not much bigger screen size than the iPhone 6 Plus um, or 7 Plus or, or whatever you got. So um, the cool part though is the docking ability and all that stuff works just like you've seen. I don't really need to get too crazy into it. I have the docking station uh, set up here in front of the TV. Um, I also have the uh, Pro Controller which USBs right to the dock so your Pro Controller will constantly be charged. Um, this controller that comes with the Switch is not very good. It's easy to set up. Um, these things are very easy. The Joy-Cons are very easy to take off. A lot of people were having trouble putting them on, uh, the straps upside down and stuff. It kind of seems weird to me that that would be the case. Now this controller in its setup is way better, I believe, than using the Joy-Cons on their own for a game such as Zelda but uh, this is not very nice uh, as you can see it's a it's a freaking square man and anybody gets into gaming whether whether you have your uh, your Xbox controller you can you can kind of tell the difference it's so squared off and it sits in your hands so weird now this is way better 
than using the Joy-Cons by themselves. And for the first night that I played Zelda, I did use this. Um, it is usable, and if you can't get a Pro Controller right away, it's something to do, but it's something that you think need to think about replacing. The Pro Controller, on the other hand, is amazing. The only problem with it is the price. It's $69. It's ridiculously overpriced, I think, but I believe all controllers are overpriced. A PS4 or Xbox One is 50 to 60 bucks as well. So it's right in the in the range of a controller space. But I 30 bucks for a controller seems more reasonable to me. With that being said though, the battery life on this is amazing. I've never actually had it die out on me. Um, but that is also too because it's constantly charging every time I put it down. Um, but very good Bluetooth another cool thing about the pro controller is the amiibo support right on the controller So if you did want to use that it's there I highly suggest getting a pro controller if you're gonna get the switch because down the road for games like Mario and stuff like that Anytime you hook this into the TV you grab this pro controller and go sit down and you're gonna have a good gaming experience with it The joy cons are for party games. They're not for hardcore games. So your Mario's your Splatoon's um, God, Fire Emblem, obviously Zelda, you're not going to want a Joy-Con at all the time. A lot of people are talking about sitting down and playing like this freehand, and it works. It totally works. You could totally do it. But if you're anything like me, man, I've been playing games my entire life, and I, it's so weird to get used to. Um, it's not it almost it's almost comparable to like getting into VR for the first time and everything's so so crazy trying to use these hand, like separate and sitting on the couch all relaxed playing with them it's just not the same um, and that's just for me but I suggest highly getting a, a pro controller uh, with the switch if you get one that being said the joy cons are really good uh, the co connectivity issues that people were having at launch um, and certain people, I never had them, never had any problems with the Joy-Cons. They work really good uh, for small games like the Snipper Clips and stuff like that. But, uh, and the battery on them is amazing. Another thing though, very pricey. If you want a second set of Joy-Cons for somebody else, they're like $79. So, very expensive. The cool thing about them though, if you did get a second set, they are interchangeable. If you wanted to get another set of Neons, you could have two blues for a Switch. You can have the red. And that's this is where really where it comes into play because taking the switch mobile outside of the dock I found is how I played it a majority of the time even with Zelda which you would think would be the game that you would want on the big screen I found myself playing probably 80% of it on the switch itself just sitting on the couch uh, with the TV right across the room that I could have played on so amazing picture crystal clear a lot of people are talking about the resolution not that good because it's a Nintendo it's you know it's not 4k it's not uh, 1080p in the 60 frames it's amazing on this little screen it's beautiful obviously you lose a little bit putting up on the big screen but it's not that bad I don't know what anybody's talking about when they say that you know Zelda looks choppy when you put it on the TV it doesn't it looks good it looks really good all right so the system great it works great it functions great I don't think there's anything wrong with it I haven't had the scratches on my screen from putting it in and out of the dock like people are talking about and this is a day one system this isn't any different than anybody else's so the problems that people are having I have to assume are somewhat user created I think that some people are really putting it through the ringer and giving it a harder time than it probably deserves um, the kickstand I have not used pretty much at all it's uh, flimsy as crap a lot of people talk about oh it feels like it's gonna break it's actually designed to break it's actually designed to snap off and you can snap it back in so in a way that's good but in another way I wish they would have put maybe two so that it sits up a little stronger or a, a little thicker one the other problem too a uh, major problem I think is that the charge port uh, if you wanted to charge it in is on the bottom right here so if you have it in the kickstand mode you can't charge it the battery life in handheld mode playing Zelda hardcore non-stop is about three hours maybe a little bit more if you wanted to put it in standby mode or turn it off this thing will last for days 
um, but I've never been into that. You know, it, it tells you that it has a ton of a ton of time, but I've never had that problem. I'm always uh, I'm always playing. I'm still in Zelda right now. You can see it says playing, and I've been in it for a while. So that's another cool thing about this is going from straight off, turning it on. Um, you can go ahead. Let's see. Where's the A? So as soon as you turn it on, triple A gets you back into the game, and immediately you can you're taking off back in Zelda. The on time is instantaneous, and you know it's a cartridge-based system. Um, it has an SD card slot, so you can get as uh, you know as much memory as you want. But the cartridge-based system, a lot of people didn't know if that was going to be the way to go. It's uh, and you can you can get the downloads, but it's amazing how fast, how big of a game Zelda is. To take an open world game like that on the go and be able to just, you're in it. And you get out of the car and you go inside and three hours later you take your lunch break and you just pop it on, you know, and you're back right into it. Or, you you know, and the switching in and out from the switch to the from the dock right back to the handheld, it's instantaneous. It's just like the commercial. The only other thing that I would probably gripe about about the console itself is the storage. When I said that it had an SD card slot, it does. It's underneath the kickstand. Um, it's a mini SD card slot, the micro SD, and it, it supports up to high, uh, t you know a couple of terabytes, I think, or I don't know what you can get right now for like a 256, maybe more, but I think it, it's supposed to support ultra high micro SD cards. The problem is the system itself only has 32 gigabytes of space, and your games that you like, if you don't get an SD card, I didn't get an SD card right away, so I put Zelda on this. Zelda took up a couple of gigs. I re there isn't really much space left on this. The other thing is that your save files for all your games go directly on the Switch. So that means I can't take Zelda to another Switch or somebody else and get that save file. It's not on the game and it's not on the memory card. If my Switch died and I needed to replace the memory card, the game's gone. The save file is dead. So let's talk about the games, and this is probably where we're going to start to go into the negative on the Switch. All right, and this is where we're this is this is, this is where I'm going to start to. All right, everybody, let's talk about the games. The game, and I'm serious. Like a month in, and this is the game. This is a good game. This is probably one of the best games I've ever played in my entire life. But this is it, man. This is your Switch. If you weren't digging Zelda, there's no reason to buy a Switch. And at this point now, a month later, if you ain't digging Zelda, there's no reason to buy a Switch. The game uh, release, at least in the States, is lackluster at best. It is a region-free console, and you can load up the Japanese game store and uh, bring stuff from there. But that's there's no excuse to have such a terrible launch lineup. If Zelda was not coming out and was not ready to release uh, with the Switch, they wouldn't have released the Switch. It would have flopped. It would have been terrible. I can't really understand why they still released the Switch at the time, except that they were like ready to push Zelda out. I know that at one point uh, the Zelda for the Wii U was supposed to come out first, and then it was gonna the Switch would launch with, and they didn't want to do that. I guess they wanted, and it made sense. It makes total sense. And launching the Switch with Zelda, it was the best marketing decision of their life. I mean, the thing's selling like hotcakes um, because of this game. But we're 30 days in. I mean, we're a month into this system, and this is it. This is it still. I know that there's a couple other games, but you gotta be. You gotta be kidding me if you think I'm gonna pay 40 bucks for Binding of Isaac, right? I've, that game's been out for a long time. I got two copies on different systems. Like, there's no way I'm paying 40 dollars for Binding of Isaac. And some of the other games, I mean, the the little five dollar, you know, Shovel Knight. That's whatever, dude. These are old games. Like, you should have some better lineups. Splatoon, um, Mario Kart, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe still doesn't come out for almost another month. It's April 28th that it comes out. We're it is a month away. Two months for Mario Kart 8? I got that upstairs on the Wii U right now. It's ridiculous, the game lineup for the Switch. Now, that being said, 
if you can get over the fact, if you're okay playing Zelda, and Zelda's long, man. I got like 80-some hours into Zelda right now, and I'm still not done. I haven't found all the shrines. I have beat Ganon. The game is done. But uh, it's the game, there's so much more to do. I have not finished. Plus, you have the DLC coming out as well. So if you're fine getting Zelda right now, and you're thinking about hopping into the Switch, this is worth... This game alone is worth getting the Switch for because you're not going to go buy a Wii U to play Zelda. doesn't make sense. You'll buy the Switch. This is worth buying it for. I want to repeat that a million times because this game is amazing. I can't stress that enough. But you really have to know what you're getting yourself into. You're getting yourself into a lot of money invested into a system and the hopes that the games will be there. I'm sure they will. I'm sure that things are going to come out. I mean, to tell you the truth, if it was just this and Mario at the end of the year, I would be happy. But not, I am not everybody, man. I play a ton of games. I play a lot of games. I play games on every system and PC. So I have a ton of entertainment to put me to the side. If you have to pick right now between a PlayStation 4 and a Nintendo Switch, go PlayStation 4. If you got to pick right now between an Xbox One and a Nintendo Switch, and you need games to play, you want to have a variety, get the Xbox One. Because this does not have it right now. It doesn't. And some of the stuff that it comes with, some of these like these, these flimsy uh, little add-on things, it's great that they give you this controller, but it's not good. It sucks. You have to get a pro controller if you want a hardcore game um, or use the Joy-Cons by themselves, and that's just kind of weird. The other uh, unfortunate part is that you'll get the one dock. It's a very cheap dock. All right, I'm gonna show you the dock again. It's very flimsy, very cheap. It's cool looking. It's very swaggerish. You know, I do like the way that it that it looks, but it's freaking cheap. There's only a there's a little computer card in there. The rest of it's just cheap plastic. You feel how light it is. It feels flimsy. This feels really good. The system itself is amazing, but the dock is cheap as shit. And if you want an extra dock so you could take it upstairs, take it downstairs, and plug it into the TV, it's like a hundred bucks for an extra dock, and you can't even find them right now. So let's say the Switch, let's say you only have one dock, you don't need two docks. So you got the Switch, you get the Pro Controller, it's 300, it's 79. You're going to need a memory card. you got to get a memory card. Now, I don't have one right now, and I don't need one because all I'm going to play is Zelda for probably another couple of months, and so I don't even have the memory card. But you're looking at probably 60 70 80 bucks for that because you're going to want a decent size. No point in getting a 16, 32 gig memory card. You're going to fill this thing up with games, especially if you start downloading indie titles. But um, So you're looking at 400 bucks. Easy easy and probably more like 450 500 by the time you get a good card that pro controller and then anything else a case um you know tempered glass screen protector there's a lot of there's a lot of things if you were to sit me down right now and say 500 dollars or you get the playstation 4 of this don't get this all right guys this is the reason i don't do reviews because i'm not very good at them but I hope that you liked at least what I had to tell you about the Switch, and hopefully it helps you in determining whether you get one or not. Um, I will reiterate that this is an amazing system, and you should not feel bad if you want one or if you bought one. It is amazing. But for the people that think that they want to get one uh, or are right now kind of on the line between should I get a PlayStation 4 or should I get a Switch, you need to really think long and hard because as cool and as amazing as this thing is and it's probably as good as it's going to be six months to a year from now in the games right now it's not right now it is this this is it really um bomberman's no binding isaac 40 bucks no this is it one two switch no so this is the Zelda machine for probably at least another two months. And if you can deal with that, then it's an amazing Zelda machine. Hey guys, thanks a lot for listening and hanging out today. Um, you can kind of tell why I don't do reviews. These kind of videos are just not my cup of tea. But 
I had to let you guys know what I thought about this because I don't get to kind of I don't get to showcase this enough on my channel. Um, having Zelda being the only game, and it's something that uh, is on a lot of people's mind. And any time I go anywhere, people ask me about it. So hey, I just wanted to make this quick video. Uh, but that being said, I'm going to get back to gaming, and I hope to see you guys on the next one. This is Zero, and I'm out.